yes, yes, and yes. I heard you guys and I will make one video for portfolio presentation. And this is it. Because in this video, I'm going to cover five huge tips to make your portfolio presentation a lot better in a video call interview. I'm going to cover things like what should you include in a presentation, in what format, how many slides, what's the rhythm, and of course, your favorite bonus content in the end. So watch it until the end. Also, lots of love and best wishes from me to designers in Ukraine and Russia. Hope this video helps those who are interviewing for new UI and UX position. And now, let's get into it here. Morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. To start off, let's establish some context, shall we? There's a term that we need to know about, followability. Yeah, I totally just made that up when I was writing the script for this video. Followability describes, in a given presentation, how easy is it for your audience to follow? Does it take a lot of mental effort to follow? Is it going too fast, too slow? How connected is it from one slide to another? Is there a common thread that weave all the slides, all the content together? Will your audience fall asleep or yawn in the presentation? Do they need to bend their wheels to stay awake? Does it feel repetitive? Do your audience get frustrated looking at your slides? Will they get bored? See what I'm getting at? I mention this because I realize this is actually a really, really important piece in the portfolio presentation, whether it's on-site, in person, or in a video call actually. And sometimes it could be a make or break to the next round. Since we have this foundation set up, now we can dive right into all of the five tips. Tip number one, use a slide deck, but not your online portfolio. I've already covered a really thorough rationale why using a slide deck over your web portfolio in one of my previous videos. So I'm gonna spare all the details today. But if you're interested, link in the corner and down below. From a high level view, a slide deck does give you a lot of benefits. One, you have a lot more, a lot better control of the narrative, the pace, the content synchronization, which is very important, and the overall experience to your interviewers. In other words, presenting a slide deck instead of a web portfolio in a video call interview dramatically increases the followability of your presentation. Tip number two, less slides stay longer. One minute per slide is kind of the rule of thumb. In a 40 minute presentation, 40 slides top. 30 minute presentation, 30 slides top. Since this is just a rule of thumb, it's not a hard rule because sometimes you can have two minutes per slide if there's a story or some details to elaborate. Sometimes you might have 50 slides for a 30 minute presentation because many of those slides are actually for transition and magic moves. Ah, good old days for in-person presentation, huh? So they all vary. Nowadays, since most interviews are remote video calls, most likely you're gonna keep the deck light on animations and hence less slides. Next, try to stay longer on one slide. So one minute is kind of a good amount because one, it gives you enough time to explain what's going on in your slide. And second, it gives the audience, your interviewers, enough time to finish reading what's going on on your slide. In other words, better followability. Imagine you go to another slide every five seconds, transition all the time, so many animations, so much magic move. Before I can touch just one slide, I have to see another thing coming in. No, no, no. Terribly difficult to follow. A final note on this one, nowadays a lot of these video conferencing calls actually uses something called lazy loading. It's one technique that they use to optimize animations, MP4 content, even images, meaning any animations or pictures that you show will appear super blurry to your audience in the first few seconds. And over time, it's gonna ramp up to the highest resolution that you intend it to be. And of course, the smoothness of the animation. So it totally makes sense to stay on one slide longer especially you have some mp4 and gifs to show let it finish loading right let them see what your animation really is about if you have to show any animations tip number three prepare for everything but don't show everything this is the core of these five tips in terms of what to show here's a very typical safe but not gonna go wrong and efficient structure you can start with the summary of your project who's working on it what is your role how long it might take, who you collaborated with, followed by the problem statement, what problem are you trying to solve, and then present your final solution with your final execution, your highly polished mock-up, maybe some animations, you're calling out features, super big, super high-res mock-up, 
I've explained about this in the previous videos, link in the corner and down below. Then the constraint that you're working with is a legal constraint, engineering constraint, maybe even time constraint. For school projects, because you're not working with product managers or engineers, so you have to find out what the constraints really are when you're doing this project in school. Maybe you even impose yourself some constraints. This is important because in the real world, all projects have all kind of constraints. And if you don't have any in your school projects, it's hard for interviewers to relate. Having constraints, that means you're gonna have some evolution of your design. How do these constraints drive your decision making in design? Is it backed by research data? Is it a product requirement? Or any backstories, any interesting inspiration they're trying to draw? Put this here. This is part and only part of your process. It's not the full process, only part of the process. And the next is the impact of your project. Does it help increase revenue by 5,000%? Does it help reduce the drop-off rate by 200%? What's your impact of this project? Next is secret menu. All-time favorite. I always have a secret menu in all my presentations. This is where I keep, or in this case, you can keep all your progress, all your process, progress work. You can also imagine and anticipate what questions you might get asked and put those slides in your secret menu. If they don't ask, it's fine. But if they ask, you can navigate to your secret menu. Maybe it's behind the Q&A page to elaborate more with some visuals on the screen. So this is one way to present it. By no means is a set structure, set order. You can rearrange them and see what fits your story. No matter what order you have, what content you have, I have one secret weapon for you to connect all your slides to make them more cohesive, a lot easier to follow, which is to have one common element from one slide to another. So here's an example. You have three slides, one, two, and three. In slide one, you have element A, B. Slide two, B, C. Slide three, C, D. So you have B shared between slide one and two, and element C shared between two and three. If you structure it this way, your presentation will be very, very easy to follow because there's always something that they can hold on to from slide to slide. But of course, it might not happen for every single slide you have from the beginning to the end. But the more you do it, the easier to follow overall. So that's what we're looking for. And that is one secret weapon I can offer you. And next is what not to show or try not to show unless you have a really good reason. The first one is too much research phase content, which we have covered already in another video, link in the corner and description down below. If you have one slide on persona, one slide on affinity diagram, one slide on research questions, another slide on research method, delete them. You don't need them. And I will circle back to this. Raw research studies are really hard to read and digest, and hence super low followability. They cannot follow you. Hiring managers are looking for what you learned from these research studies. So arrive at the point. Just show me a summary of the top three insights that you found out. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. Very effective, very easy to follow. Go back to the previous point. Delete those slides from the main presentation. Keep them in a secret menu. Again, if the interviewers have questions about them, I can show them. If they don't ask, I don't show anything. Best for the both worlds. And next, super, super detailed design decisions. Like why use 16 pixels instead of 20 pixels in this margin. If this is an important and interesting part of your story, sure, show it. If it's not that important, then don't show it. For example, you have two designs one with 16 pixel margin and one with 20 pixels margin. You test it both with users and the one with 16 pixels actually get 500% increase in click rate. Wow, that's a wow level finding. Something's going on there. That's interesting to show. Most of the time, this kind of details are not really that interesting. If your margin is good, I can tell. It feels good, your marks. And if it's too wide, then you screw it up. You can really dial back in all these kind of really, really tiny, small design decisions. They are important to you when you're designing it, but not really to interviewers. There are two main reasons. One, you don't have too much time in your presentation. So save the time for something else. Second, it's actually really hard to follow and keep up with these kind of level of details. And hence, super low followability. You know all the details, that's great. But at the same time, it can take up days to catch the interviewers up to speed in terms of what your design is at. This point, take note because this is actually verified by a designer at Pinterest that I spoke with and another designer that I know at Google. Don't show too much detail. In contrast, it's a lot easier for your interviewers to understand something from the high level. So you can always start with high level or mid high level and have things, super detailed things that you have ready in your secret menu. 
If anything comes up in the Q&A, you can pull up your secret menu and show them. Tip number four, sprinkle some processed live photos. For example, some photos of you working in a super messy environment. That would be nice because it feels real. That's what the design process is like. If your presentation is 100% design mockups, fully pixels, super polished is great. At the same time, to hiring managers, it could be very exhausting for them. Think about it. They interview, they review, tons of candidates every day, look at their portfolio, look at all the mocks, and then you show another set of mocks, they could fall asleep. So sprinkle some live photos here and there could really increase the followability. Even if they're falling asleep, they would be like, oh, this is interesting photo. Then they will follow again. If you really, really want to show some process of your projects, this is where you do it, the live photo. So make sure you document your project, take some photos of yourself, drawing on the wall, or somebody taking a photo of you, working in the sea of mock-up and mess and post-its and highlighters around your desk. Those are great photos. Also, maybe photos of you working with somebody else. Maybe even is slightly staged. That's okay too. But remember, these live photos are sprinkles. They are not the cake. You can remove the sprinkles. The cake is still a cake. So one or two live photos will be sufficient. Don't go crazy on that. Last but not least, tip number five, rehearse five times. So five is a magic number, is a good rule of thumb. While you're watching, take notes. V0, uh, slide 20 is a little clunky. Mm. Slide five is it's okay. Slide 30 is, I don't know what I was saying. And then you can just iterate on your V0 slide deck with all the notes that you have. This is an example of how I did mine. Whenever I finish one, I just cross it out. The more experience you have in presenting and the more you are familiar with your work, the less times you need to rehearse. If you're new or you're not sure how many times you need to rehearse, just do five. Five times. Rehearse, 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 and rehearse. Maybe after five times, treat yourself a five guys. So those are five super powerful tips you can use today to up your portfolio presentation game. I know, I know there's another powerful one you've been waiting for. I know, I know, and let's get to it. The bonus content! Bonus content! I'm happy to take a look at your portfolio presentation and give you some feedback. All you have to do is one, smash the like button to support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send your portfolio presentation to my email, which you can find in my about page, in my channel. But don't send me your portfolio link. I don't want a link. Send me your slide deck, a keynote or PDF only. This portfolio review is for video call interview purposes. Exactly what this video is about. If you want me to review your web portfolio, check out my bonus content from my other portfolio videos. After you have attached your slide deck, make sure you include your YouTube username so I know that you have left that comment. And then I will take a look at your slide deck, give you some feedback and a shout out in the next video. Good luck to you all on your next portfolio iteration, future internships and full-time jobs. So what do you guys think? Got a better idea of how to present your portfolio in a video call interview with a slide deck, less slides, rehearse five times? This is by no means a comprehensive list, so probably have more videos on this topic. If you know some other new ideas or tricks that I've not covered in this video, leave a comment, leave a comment. I would love to see what you think. And here are some related topics I plan to do in future videos. If you have a strong preference of which one you want to see first, simply let me know in the comment section down below. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a very small channel, so every like counts and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!